Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, today we're going to be reacting to Tulsi Gabbard's I'm Leaving the Democrat Party uh, speech that she gave and then come back and talk about whether or not this is legit, what her reasons were, um, and maybe, uh, I don't know, is this a grift? Who knows? But without further ado, let's go ahead and see what she has to say and then come back. I can no longer remain in today's Democratic Party that's under the complete control of an elitist cabal of warmongers who are driven by cowardly wokeness, who divide us by racializing every issue and stoking anti-white racism, who actively work to undermine our God-given freedoms that are enshrined in our Constitution, who are hostile to people of faith and spirituality, who demonize the police but protect criminals at the expense of law-abiding Americans, who believe in open borders, who weaponize the national security state to go after their political opponents, and above all, who are dragging us ever closer to nuclear war. Now, I believe in a government that's of the people, by the people, and for the people. Unfortunately, today's Democratic Party does not. Instead, it stands for a government that is of, by, and for the powerful elite. Now, I'm calling on my fellow common sense, independent-minded Democrats to join me in leaving the Democratic Party. If you can no longer stomach the direction that the so-called woke Democratic Party ideologues are taking our country, then I invite you to join me. Okay, well... She definitely gave a uh, merit of um, reasons why she is leaving the Democrat Party. And to be honest, I 100% do not blame her. Um, everything I believe she said and stated has been true. Um, I, I remember watching her for the 2020 presidential candidate debates. And the one thing out of all of the candidates that the Democrat Party could have had. I thought it was, I, I was, I was disappointed that um, they chose to discard her. I thought, if anything, she was one of the more stronger candidates that they had for uh, to be a Democrat president, and I actually really liked her. There are a lot of things I um, did not agree on. Um, for instance, her stance on being, you know, pro two A, but. It seems now, um, in light of things that have transpired over the past two years in America, she's more pro-gun now. Um, um, is that legit? Who knows? But I would gather that someone who has common sense and seeing how tyrannical our government has been over these past couple of years, I, I would think they now find the um, um, the equilibrium and having an armed society <laughs> that would um, stand up should their government ever decide to, you know, act like Australian government <laughs> did here in America. Um, and as long as we have guns, you know, that will never, ever happen. So I can see her stance on um, her two-way two -way standing, especially after uh, they pretty much attacked her um, since she haven't, hasn't been really towing the line, the party line, and saying what the party wants her to say for the past two years. And you can tell that something like this is going to happen. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if she goes, you know, independent, to be honest. Um, I only was rooting for her because I am an independent. And like, uh, contrary to what a lot of people might think, I, I do have conservative views when it comes to children and fiscally. But when it comes to adults, I really don't care what you do. But when it comes to politics, I'm always going to choose the candidate um, that teethers on moderate. Doesn't matter if they're Democrat, doesn't matter if they're Republican, most definitely doesn't matter if they're independent. But um, anyone who, um, um, who um, aspires to have more government control over their citizens is something, it, it really disturbs me on a, a very grand level. And she's seem to be one of those individuals who have, you know, taken, um, back her, you know, stance on 
more government um, involvement in their citizen lives. Um, I know some people have been asking whether or not this is she's pulling a griff because of her podcast. I mean, look, we all have to make a living, and um, you know, it's it's not like the Democrat Party really is, uh, you know, p- pulling all the red carpets for her to even have a pl- to even have a platform. So her having her own platform, being able to voice her opinions without having the judgment of Democrat her her former Democratic colleagues, I think, um, is something that every individual should have. I mean, I have my own platform here. Albeit small, but simply because she, you know, has certain views, and I don't think that by her leaving the Democrat Party, this is like a PR stunt. Like, really, are we surprised that she was going to leave? So, um, her just having to, you know, time it at the exact time of her starting her podcast, I don't think that there's anything, um, um, I guess, um, like a hidden message. I don't think that this was um, done as a grift. I really just think that timing, the timing of it was just perfect. And, you know, why would she want to have a platform that might confuse people into thinking that she she's speaking Democrat talking points when obviously Democrat Party aren't, you know, standing on those talking points. So um, another thing, I know people are always asking, well, is she, you know, she was pro-military, so is she for you know, the hypocrisy with, you know, being invested in companies or, you know, investing in companies that have, that are, you know, I guess, bomb manufacturers or war manufacturers. Um, I don't think so. If you, I was a prior, former military veteran. I mean, I'm a veteran. I, I served in the army for 10 years. Um, there's going to be individuals who have gone over, and I've been overseas three times, um, twice in Afghanistan and once in um, Iraq. Uh, when you go outside of the country and you see, um, you, you see what happened with communities and individuals that don't have strong defenses or have any sort of offense, um, what, offensive weapons, it does... It does change your view on having weapons um, on hand at home. It really does. Because when you go to these countries and you see the devastation, I'm not trying to sit here and say, I I do think us going into the war was wrong. And, you know, I was so young and I'm pretty sure Tulsi Gabbard was young. She she wasn't when she joined. I'm pretty sure a lot of us didn't um, really think too much into why we were attacked on 9-11. We were just told that it happened. I was in school and it happened. I have no idea where Tulsi was, but I was in school and it happened. And I hadn't been in politics. I didn't know anything about politics at that age. I was just learning about American government. I was just learning about all this stuff. So to, um, and I wasn't watching the news. So obviously when you're being attacked, the first thing you're going to think about is let's get these bad guys, you know? So you're going to sign up just like I did, just like she did. And, um, you go, you know, go and fight for your country. That's what you, you want to fight and defend because of the, of the, of them attacking us. Um, it isn't until later when you start really understanding the nuances of politics that you start thinking that, Hey, maybe we were wrong on this, uh, especially when you start digging into why we went, why it was even, why we, why we even got to that point. What did America do to possibly provoke this? Um, I mean, we've had, you know, the desert storm. Um, I mean, we've been involved with the Middle East for a very long time. I mean, there is the Northern Alliance that we used. Um, as a proxy, we use them basically to have a proxy war with Russia. We have had a lot of, a lot of dealings with the Middle East. So to sit here and act like, you know, by, um, her, you know, maybe having some investments in some of these companies that manufacture weapons, um, and then use that as a, a way to say that maybe she's a hypocrite when it comes to, you know, war, 
uh, you, you can't look at it from that, you know, that standpoint. Just because she doesn't like what's going on over there, it doesn't mean she doesn't support um, or why, why would she want to support manufacturing weapons here for just defense? This is not this. These weapons are not just going to be sent over to Ukraine. It's not like we are manufacturing these weapons just for Ukraine. We're also manufacturing weapons for us and our allies, just in case anything happens. So I think it would be wise to invest in security. And you know, I I mean I worked for Raytheon at one point, and um, you know I had to leave because well I didn't want to leave, but I felt like. I did, you know, my time here, just like when I served in my military, I'm always going to want to do things to, you know, promote my country and to protect my country because um, even though I might get called a coon or whatever, I do care about my neighbor. So I don't think that by Tulsi, um, you know, whether that's investing in these companies uh, is a sign that she is um, a hypocrite when it comes to of the warmongering that's happening in Congress. I haven't seen her once um, say that she's in support of sending more and more weapons and money over to Ukraine to continue on this war because the longer this war gets drawn, uh, the, the longer this war continues, the more we get drawn in. And at, at some point, you have to ask yourself, with us contributing so much of our, our dollars, so much of our weapons, when will Russia consider us an enemy? When will they say you are funding this to the point where you are now our greatest enemy? So I understand where she's coming from, but that doesn't mean that um, that I shouldn't invest in you know individuals or com individual companies that are making these weapons. It's like a damn if you do and damn if you don't situation. Okay, so that's my take on it. I honestly think she's a, a great individual. And yes, there might be things I did not agree with her on, like definitely the immigration um, situation. I don't think anyone should be here who is illegal, period. Only asylum seekers and um, refugee seekers, not economical seekers. That's no, that's not, that is not persecution. You should go back to your country where, you know, you, uh, you should go back to your country and stand up to your government um, and call out their corruption. If you can't do it there, I most definitely don't want you doing uh, being here. So um, um, it just speaks volumes to not only their character, but also just their strength to stand up against adversity. That's just my take on it. Uh, and then when it comes to 2A, like I said, I think she's changed her stance now after she has seen the tyrannical um, display of what our government has literally been giving us for the past two years. So um, that's my take on all of this. And you guys have a great day. Like, subscribe, and share. <laughs> I always forget that. <laughs>